Okay, before we move on to something new, uh, I've just only realized, of course, that our command factory is in our uh, test assembly, which isn't really very good, so we'll just move that to the right place. And delete here. And let's go to command factory, and that should be rubber cleaner. run our tests. Uh, so if we look at our inputs again, really we're handling inputs but the only input we're handling completely is the first line where we actually define the actual number commands. So we should probably go on to uh, handle the second command which represents the starting position of the robot. Okay, so we need to create somewhere we can store our uh, positions. Uh, the, for example, here initially, we're interpreting our commands, we're going to store the initial position of the robot. Uh, so let's add a new test. And this unit test we will call uh, location. Right, and here we go, uh, we're going to create. Create location. Uh, correct position. Okay. Um, and here we will call. We have called our class location, so we can say it's a robot cleaner dot uh, location. We'll have assert uh, is equal equal um, three hundred and that's location x. I know it's not a good idea to have multiple asserts in uh, a single unit test, but this is very much very highly correlated tests, so should be okay. Okay, so we have our test, and obviously, if we run our unit test now, it fails. Uh, so now we need to generate a class. have a location here, but we need to move that to the robot cleaner. Okay. Uh, we need to generate a constructor. We need to generate the properties.
Oh, so that should be uh, in it. Uh, we want to rename this to X. Uh, we want to rename this to Y. And then these should, of course, uh, return and that this should return We have a location class. And we have our location tests here. Okay, we just build. And check our uh, unit tests are okay. Yeah, there we have uh, our new test. So we've got a location, we've got a met storage container for our location. Okay, now that we can store our location, we need to uh, interpret the uh, input. So if we go to our tests, And here we've got number of positions. So if we create a new test, I create a confactory. Um, set uh, normal position. Normal position. And the result being the position is correct. So we create cam factory, we've got our standard input there, those two lines. Uh, we'll have zero commands, just a position. Uh, afterwards input is complete, yeah that's true. But really, we want to test that uh, we want to check that the command is start position X is equal to ten. And that the command factory start position y is equal to 22. Okay. Now we need to build. So we need to fix this so this test runs. And we want to have a private uh, location. <coughs> uh, what do we call it? Start position.
Okay, if I go back to a rubber test, we said let's change this to so. Uh, and now, if we run our test, oh, we just said it's initially the initial confectory. If we run our test on this. failed. Okay, because it's not even set. Right, so now we have to uh, fix this test so that it works. Let's go to our command factory. Here, when the uh, if the string input is count is equal to zero, we set the number of commands, and so now we should do the if if input strings dot count is equal to one uh, then we should set start position input string Okay, so we need to set the start position, and we've got a format. If we look at our format from the uh, uh, test documents or our specifications documents, we've got an example of here. You can see, and it, let's be a little more precise. The second line consists of two integers to represent the starting coordinates. So it's two integers with a space between them, and it's said here. Uh, There will be no trailing or leading, so we don't need to worry about before or after. Any multiline will have a single white space character between each value. Okay. Uh, and in in our in their example, it looks like it's a space. But the thing is, it says white space, so we can't actually be guaranteed. It could be a tab. Um, Okay, but we can start off with the simplest format, and the, the simplest thing that will make the test work. Uh, so let's just assume it's a string uh, space initially. Uh, string uh, co coordinate string bits. It's equal to input string. Here we're splitting on a uh, space. Okay. And if coordinate string bits dot length is greater than one, because we really want two bits, then Start position is equal to new location. We need to give it an x, so we've got uh, int we should, not sure we should probably really do try try parse here. Uh, but the thing is we don't have we're not allowed any error give any error messages. And it said here, uh, all input should consider well formed and syntactically correct. There's no delimitary input back. So we can just assume that these are correct in that case. So we just say that uh, int x is equal to int dot parse. Uh, coordinate string bits 0. The y is equal to coordinate string bits one. Start position is equal to new x y. Okay, 
That should be the very simplest uh, thing that should work. Now we can test our robot test again. So if we go to our robot test, uh, so now let's just test again, except we've got a different type of white space. Let's use a uh, tab separator. Tab separator. Uh, now we've got a tab. Let's see if this works. We can actually come in and see this here. We need to go see what's gone wrong. We debug that test. So the inputs are not complete. The input string is one, so we're going to set the start position, just as we would expect. And we split the coordinates there, because we're splitting on tap. We're not splitting on tap, should I say? Um, actually, we should probably uh, think if we actually redefine our split characters null. I think the default is any white space tab, white space character. So we stop and rebuild. Otherwise, we could use a regular expression. Rebuild. So let's run our test again. Yes. Okay. So now we're splitting on the other tabs. Okay. So we've got our, we've parsed our first and line with the uh, number of commands. We've parsed our uh, position, and we just need to uh, handle the actual movement commands now. Okay, we have to look at parsing of the movement commands. Uh, this is the last of the inputs. Here we've got the third and any subsequent line because there's two data. First will be a single uppercase letter, east, north, west, south, direction of the compass. Okay, and the second will be uh ensure as the number of steps and it can be small and it has to be between one and one hundred thousand. Okay. So minimum one maximum ninety-nine thousand nine uh, we might want to start with the. Um, well, actually, one thing first. I noticed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too super careful about naming. Names come out naturally, I think, over time. Uh, but one thing that's starting to bug me is that we've got a series of tests here on Command Factory, and uh, the tests are called the Robot Tests. So let's just rename that immediately to um, Command Factory Tests. And we'd like to rename the class as well. Yeah. Build the solution. Okay, let's run, and then if we just uh, run all our tests again. One thing it looks like we're going to need here is a uh, enumeration. And we we'll call this uh, directions.
what we're, we're just going to simply have uh, north uh, east south and west okay print the commands and that's in the wrong place of course oops so just move that this delete the direction I'm under there and change of course the uh, there it's the robot cleaner okay uh, if we look at our test so the, our uh, format the first letter is a direction and then the second will be an integer this of two pieces of data, so I assume that there is a gap between them. Yes, east gap to north gap one. Yep. Okay. So if we go to our command factory tests, um, we can create a new test method. Command factory. Uh, let's see, one movement command. movement commands. So we're going to add, uh, if we go back to one of our original, should have something here. Here. We've got one movement command, so we just take away that. There we go. And then we start R equal command factory dot uh, commands Do that first. Uh, and what are our movement commands going to be? Well, I think we should create something new here. So let's choose a new class. Uh, I'm going to call this a movement command. Okay, let's keep it internal for a moment. My customer grad, and we'll have a uh, two properties here. We're going to have a we're going to have a movement direction. direction uh, which we're going to have as a moment right and then it's also got a um, number of steps So we've got a direction and number of steps. Case. So now if we go to our test again.
we want to the um, after taking the input here we should have one movement command so let's fix this that it works here we've got to have um, in our movement commands. And uh, when we're having it, puts there, else, so up to this. All the, all these uh, input strings would be movement commands. Okay, and so what we want to do is we want to do movement commands. Stuff with that, uh, and here again we are. Uh, we can probably do something similar to we've done, which we did for our position. again okay and uh, just gonna switch on the right number of pieces. Uh, switch me with one. Okay, what ha what do we have? as well. Uh, if it's uh, case north. Thank you. 
south, east, west. Um, and again, we don't really have any air handling. So we should have something sort of, well, uh, we, if we assume everything's correct, then it'll always be north, south, east, or west. Uh, but I would feel safer with some sort of air handling. So we should give the direction, if you give them a direction which is unknown. default is uh, so okay uh, so we've got the direction and then we've got move the number of pieces move commands dot move steps is equal to eight dot parse uh, movement input bits one and again really there I'd like to do a, a try parse and set the actual number of steps to zero so that if you get a badly formed command, movement command, um, the robot will just ignore it and carry on. And here we're going to return uh, our movement command. Okay. So if we go back to our unit tests. run them now. Okay, we've got correct. Okay, uh, let's see, is this really the right name? Create command factory one movement command. Input. Um, and correct. commands added okay uh, so let's try create something if we look at our spec again it said uh, let's see number steps should be between zero should be one to nine nine thousand so we should check what happens outside of that so we've got case with one. With number with number steps between one and nine thousand. Okay, so let's take a case where we have uh, too many steps. Steps uh, should be ten thousand. Than, uh, less than nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Okay, so we're going to add uh, should should be one command, and here we're going to add it with uh, two hundred thousand steps. And what that should create is a movement command which has uh, movement steps.
successful and we run our unit test. Okay, it's failed. So uh, if we go back to our command factory, new steps there. Oops. Uh -huh, now here we've got not very good using hard coding, so we're going to create a constant. Uh, so constant int. Um, there's different naming conventions for constants. Um, a lot of people use, I see, use uh, like a sort of C-type naming convention with all capital letters and underscores, uh, but I'm going to use the I designs here, which um, has the max number steps. Say that if the uh, is greater than, then move commands dot move steps is equal to max. Test again. <laughs> we should just put in another one to be sure on the uh, minimum side. Do a few steps. Let's run all our tests, of course. Okay. So now we're interpreting our number of commands, we're interpreting our initial position, and we're interpreting our movement commands. Um, I think we're ready to. Uh, finish up our inputs move on to the actual cleaning robot